We'll begin to review the heart anatomy now and the flow, the blood flow within the heart itself. Um, the heart sits in an oblique position within the thoracic cavity and you can get an axial image that shows all four chambers of the heart, just a direct axial, but it will never be a good view of any of the four chambers unless you get an oblique axial. And um, there are ways to get that oblique axial to make it the best view of all four chambers at one time that you can possibly get for that patient. And we'll go over that a little bit more um, in the final portion of this heart series where we talk about um, imaging the heart itself. So this image is from eAnatomy and the next couple of images as well are from eAnatomy. This quick video from eAnatomy just gives you an idea of the motion of the heart as well as the expansion and contraction of the lungs as the heart beats. So now let's look at the blood flow within the heart itself. So you have the superior and the inferior vena cava coming into the right atrium. Through there, from there it goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle and then out through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk and the left and right pulmonary arteries. So the arteries take blood away from the heart but this is actually deoxygenated blood that's going into the lungs. So then it goes into the lungs the lungs oxygenate the blood, comes back through the pulmonary veins, and this image does not show the superior and inferior pulmonary veins, but there are actually superior and inferior pulmonary veins on each side that bring blood into the left atrium, through the bicuspid or mitral valve, into the left ventricle, and then out through the aortic valve and around through the uh, ascending aorta, the aortic arch, and the descending aorta. So here we've got it written out, superior and inferior vena cava into the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, out through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk, the right and left pulmonary arteries, and into the lungs. Oxygenates, comes back through the right and left pulmonary veins and actually superior and inferior, but you don't, uh, as long as you say it's coming back through the pulmonary veins, you'll be fine. The left atrium, through the bi, uh, bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle, through the aortic valve into the ascending aorta, and then into the aortic arch. Again, the branches off the arch are the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery, and then into the descending aorta. So here are some images from Netters to give you a little bit of idea of what's happening within the heart. You've got the heart within the chest cavity here. Um, Netters has pulled away the lung slightly so that you can see uh, behind it to the heart and the pleural cavity. And this is the thymus. You've got the superior vena cava coming into the atrium here. And that is all um, of the uh, vessels that Netters has um, supplied you within this image. Um, there's no inferior vena cava coming into it. But if you take a look at the images here on the right, in this bottom image, it's positioned very similarly. It's an anterior view, um, as is this picture on the left here. So here you've got the superior vena cava and the inferior, inferior vena cava in the right atrium coming into the right ventricle. Up above, you've got a little bit more of a lateral view. So we're taking a look from this side of the patient here, and you can see the superior and inferior vena cava going into the right atrium, which would then dump into the right ventricle. Um, so you can see the apex of the heart is pointed a little bit more to our right and the patient's left than it would be here in this image where the uh, patient is facing you. So once again, this is the superior and inferior vena cava, the right atrium going into the right ventricle, and then from there, it would be going through the pulmonary valve and out into the pulmonary trunk. So let's take a look at that on some CT images. So we're starting in the middle of the heart where the superior, in, superior and inferior vena cava go into the right atrium. So we've got the right atrium here and the right ventricle, the left atrium and the left ventricle. So notice the position of the heart. It's not centered directly in the body. The right ventricle is the most anterior. The left atrium is the most posterior. 
The left ventricle is the most to the left side of the patient and you will see that it has the thickest wall. So that is a very good way to identify the left ventricle. And the right atrium is the most um, to the right most side of the patient. So the right atrium is the most right chamber of the heart and the left ventricle is the most left leftmost um, chamber of the heart. So this is a four chamber view of the heart. However, you are seeing the left atrium and the left ventricle much more clearly than the right atrium and the right ventricle. So with the right atrium, it go, uh, the blood goes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, and then it would go out of the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve and to the pulmonary trunk. So we're gonna take a look at that here on the image on the right. So you've got the pulmonary valve here, and then going the blood goes into the pulmonary trunk and out to the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Remember, we talked about the right and the left pulmonary arteries a little bit earlier when we talked about um, the bronchi. And we've got the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus, and the right pulmonary artery runs anterior to the right main bronchus, and the left pulmonary artery runs superior and then posterior to the left main bronchus. So here it's going to go up and over that left main bronchus here. We've also got the ascending aorta and the descending aorta. The SVC um, is filled with contrast because we inject into the venous system. The SVC are going to have a lot more contrast in them to begin with and then the blood will mix as it goes um, through the right atrium and right ventricle and into the pulmonary arteries and it becomes much less dense at that point. So once again, the right atrium is the rightmost chamber and both the SVC and IVC drain into the right atrium here. And then you've got the tricuspid valve going into the right ventricle. It's the most anterior chamber in the heart and it's just behind the sternum. And then from there it goes through the pulmonary valve, which is the most superior valve in the heart and um, goes into the pulmonary valve, then into the pulmonary trunk, into the right and left pulmonary arteries. And that is taking deoxygenated blood into the lungs, and that's where the blood becomes oxygenated. Here's another great view of the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries. So the pulmonary trunk is inferior to the aortic arch. You see that we have gone inferior to the actual arch and now we are at the ascending aorta and the descending aorta. So this is a pulmonary trunk and this is the right pulmonary artery. This course is anterior to the right main bronchus. And then the left pulmonary artery courses superior and then posterior to the left main bronchus. So we've already gone uh, past the point where it is coursing above and superior to the left main bronchus, and now you see the posterior portion of that. This is the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery, the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus, and the pulmonary trunk. This is the uh, ascending aorta and the descending aorta. Just inferior to the pulmonary arteries are the pulmonary veins. So after the blood gets oxygenated into the lungs, it comes back through the right pulmonary veins and the left pulmonary veins. And here we're catching the right superior pulmonary vein and the left inferior pulmonary vein because they don't sit just exactly um, at the same horizontal level in the body. They are just slightly askew. Um, so the right um, superior pulmonary vein and the left inferior pulmonary vein are at about the same level. It also depends on how the patient is positioned in the in the scanner as well. Um, so here are the pulmonary veins coming back into the left atrium um, before it goes into the left ventricle. This is again an uh, image from e anatomy here. This e-anatomy scan is very similar to the image we started with when we were talking about the right atrium and how the SVC and the IVC dump into the right atrium. So here we have the right atrium and the right ventricle and the tricuspid valve sits between those two. 
and then we have the left atrium and the left ventricle and the bicuspid valve sits in between these two. Again we have that very thick wall in the left ventricle so that's how you identify that chamber of the heart and we were just on the last slide discussing how the uh, pulmonary veins dump into the left atrium. So the right superior and inferior and left superior and inferior pulmonary veins bring blood back to the heart into the left atrium. It goes from there through the mitral or bicuspid valve into the left ventricle and then from there it would go out through the aortic valve. So the left atrium is the most posterior chamber, inferior to the carina, and the pulmonary veins drain into the left atrium. Um, between the left atrium and the left ventricle is a bicuspid or mitral valve, and the left ventricle again is the uh, leftmost chamber and also the one with the large thick wall. And the aortic valve is the most central of the valves in the heart. It sits right in the middle of the heart, and we'll take a look at that on the next image. And then you've got the intraventricular, centrum, <laughs> intraventricular septum as well between the right and the left ventricles. It's a very thick wall between the two ventricles. So looking at this image here on the left, you can see how the aortic valve is very centrally located within the heart. This is a midline coronal image, um, not perfectly right in the center, but somewhere in the middle of the body. Um, as you see, we cannot see the right ventricle, and the right ventricle sits most anterior in the body. Um, this is the right atrium here, and the left ventricle, you can see that thick wall again, and out of the left ventricle, the blood flows through the aortic valve and into the ascending aorta, into the um, aortic arch. This is the pulmonary arteries here, uh, so that you can see how centrally located that aortic valve is within the body. And this image here is uh, a little confusing as to the position, but mostly what I want to show you is that very thick wall in the left ventricle. The left ventricle is, has a very thickened wall. It's easy to see it um, in, oh, sorry about that, in sectional anatomy, as well as um, if you were doing a, a post-mortem on a patient, you could see how thick that wall is. And then over here, I want to show you, uh, begin talking about the oracles as well. So the oracles are sort of an overflow area uh, within the atrium of the heart. So the right atrium has this right oracle here, and it also is a protectant for the um, coronary arteries. Same thing on the left. You can see just a little bit here of the left oracle. Um, they call them an atrial appendage and you can see how um, you, don't, you don't see the coronary artery here but we'll talk about it a little bit later but it does offer a little bit of protection to the coronary arteries and so I want to show you those on this image. We can see the aortic valve a little more clearly in this CT image. You can see it very well here and how centrally located this is within the heart itself. So this is the aortic valve and you can see that the bicuspid and the aortic valves are very close and they sit in an oblique position. So here is the bicuspid valve and it sits obliquely within the heart and then the aortic valve also sits obliquely within the heart. To that end, almost all the um, valves are slightly oblique within the body and they sit side by side within the heart somewhat. Um, but the, the aortic valve is the most centrally located posterior to anterior and left to right as well. So bicuspid valve here, aortic valve going into the ascending aorta, the pulmonary valve going into the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries. And here again we do see a better picture of the pulmonary veins as the blood comes back to the heart. Superior and inferior right and superior and inferior left pulmonary veins and then also the tricuspid valve from the right atrium into the right ventricle. So I don't want you to worry about this image for the test or anything, but I just wanted to show you one more way to look at the valves. Um, this is a unique position. Um, the atria of the heart are removed, as it says here. Um, so that means the more posterior side of the heart is removed, and you can see through these two valves into the um, ventricles of the heart. 
and then you have the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve. So you can see how the pulmonary valve sits more superiorly than the aortic valve, and the aortic valve is in the center of the heart. And I just wanted to show you that in one more view um, so that you could kind of uh, have a visualization of where that aortic valve is in, within the heart. And from that, we'll go on to the arterial flow um, as the blood leaves the heart through the ascending aorta. Um, and we'll do that in a separate lecture so that you don't have one very long lecture.